then the next one. Jyoti Tamaparai. Brightness to dark. I think many people <laughs> are going from brightness to dark. So what happened? When they gain their things and requisite very easy, especially in a very, very rich family, those who got a big property from their parents, they spent lavishly, they waste their property and they misuse and they can use their property or money or income to commit any kind of immoral or wicked or dangerous thing because they have money. So they are not scared. They think we got money. Why worry? Bribery, corruption, they practice. Do not know. They are going from brightness to dark. They have no future. They have not accumulated enough good merit. They have not trained their human mind properly. They abuse, misuse, if not some other, by adapting very cunning and crooked, selfish methods, gain lot of property, bluffing and swindling others, or harming and disturbing others, become very rich, enjoy their life. After enjoying within that lifetime, what will happen to them? They have not done enough good karma, not accumulated enough good karma to have a better rebirth, better life, to continue their life in, in reasonable or pleasurable way. So they go from darkness, to, from brightness to darkness. The net life become very miserable. There were many Buddhist stories. The Buddha has pointed out certain beggars and certain people who suffered pointed out. Do you know this person? During his previous birth, he was enjoying his life by swindling, bluffing, cheating, disturbing others. He was a very rich man, millionaire, multi-millionaire. After his death, you can see how rebirth has taken place. How he suffered today because of his bad karma. How, how he abused his property, you can understand. Uh, they are the people who go from brightness to darkness. So although you have more than enough things, don't misuse, don't abuse. Try to make use of your knowledge, your understanding, your property, your energy to do some service to others, to release others' suffering, help others to get rid of their problems and difficulties. Then, although you are enjoying this life within this period, the next one never become miserable if you maintain this understanding. You have to think, how I got so much while others are suffering even without food? In fact, I did not work very hard to gain so much property. My income is very good, but many others working like slaves day and night, even then, they cannot find out three meals a day. They have no shelter for them to sleep. They have no clothing to wear. They have no medicine to take when they are sick. They have no money to educate their children. They too work. Why do I gain all these things very easily? Even without working, I gain more than enough. Then they have to think. These are the effects, good results of the good karma that I have done during my previous birth. So today I am experiencing, I am gaining what I have given, what I have done to others. So I must be wise. 
you know, the life story, previous birth story of the Buddha during the King Vistantara. He was a ruler, the king. He had seen how his father, grandfather, grand-grandfather, the previous kings, have collected so much valuable treasure, gold and silver and valuable stones and everything, full store rooms. Then he started to think. They have collected, they were dead and gone, but they have not taken anything. I must be wise. I must take away all these things when I die. See? So what did he do? He invited all the beggars and poor people in the whole kingdom, invited the palace, and started to distribute. Now this is the way how he decided to carry with him distributed among the poor people. Uh, this is the way how he practiced dana, charity, uh, what do you call uh, generosity, to reduce his selfishness, to support others. So the giver is the one who gains, but not the receiver. Receiver won't gain anything after that, but the giver, the donor, gains. It depends what he needs, whether he needs in return the same property or whether he needs knowledge or wisdom, whether he needs more energy and, and uh, something else, it is up to him. So we can gain anything whatever we like, whatever we want. Dhanam khalu sabhavena sakja manusa bhogata, naturally. When we donate something for the benefit of others, we get many things in return, whether we aspire or whether we pray for that or not. It is natural. But the Buddha's advice is be wise. Don't lower the real validity of your meritorious deeds by creating aspiration that you want to gain more and more wealth than property and worldly things. What will happen? After spending or experiencing what you gain, within that lifetime everything will be old, no more. Nothing for you to carry for. If you gain more knowledge and wisdom and understanding and courage, you can cultivate your knowledge and wisdom and energy, then you can carry life after life. You can maintain your knowledge and your wisdom and your energy until you reach your final goal. Now see the difference. So don't be crazy for worldly things, material things, by giving dana and offering this and that. You must gain more valuable things, not worldly material things. Now then, brightness to darkness, while enjoying and never realize that they gain more than enough things for them to enjoy their life due to the good karma that they have accumulated. If they have neglected their way of life within that lifetime, again can collapse from there. Because the karmas that he has accumulated, worldly karma, are not strong enough to continue life after life, to provide the requisite life after life. Every time they have to do this, ah, this is the danger, this is the uncertainty. Assume during your previous birth you have done a lot of good meritorious things. Now you are experiencing, certainly you are experiencing. 
When you compare your way of life with others, you can understand. You are not starving, you gain enough food, you have a house, you have clothing, you have medicine, and all your senses are working, you are not mad, you are not crippled, you are not blind. So how fortunate you are. That means you have done some good karma. But this is not enough. Again, within this lifetime, you have to accumulate some more and more for the next. If you neglect this, simply enjoy your life, what you gain through the influence of your previous karma. Nobody knows what will happen to your next life. There is no guarantee. Another thing. Uncertainty of our mind. Very uncertain. Today you are very kind, very honest, religious minded, reduce your selfishness. But circumstances, temptation, irritation, any moment can change your mind. There is no guarantee that you never change your mind very cultured or religious-minded, well-educated person can become very cruel, very selfish, very dangerous man. Uncertainty of the mind. That is why the Buddha always advises us, don't prolong here within this cycle of birth, because life is uncertain, mind is uncertain. Others can influence you, although you are good. Others can mislead you, although you are good. Then again life gets into trouble. You have to handle this very, very carefully. But how long can you maintain? Collapse. Again get up. Work and work and work and get up. You become human beings again. After leading one or two lives, again you collapse. How long will it take for you to get up again? Ah, uh, this is what we are doing, life after life. People never think seriously 